Hi friends. In today's video, we are going to discuss Biosevert law and its application. So what's a Biosevert law? Biosevert law is the law given by Bio and Severt, which tells about that uh, what is the magnetic field created by a current carrying wire uh, at a nearby point. So in 1820, Oersted makes a very interesting observation. What he saw actually that if you have a current carrying wire which uh, has the constant current I flowing through it and if you bring uh, your magnetic compass near to this current carrying wire the magnetic compass was getting deflected. This interesting observation by Austrad led Bayer and Severt to study this matter further and they try to answer the obvious question after this observation that what is the amount of magnetic field that is being created at point P or any other point nearby this current carrying wire. So that led to a series of experiments and observation. Based on that, they give a law and the law says that the magnetic field at point P, I will say what law, That the magnetic field at point P by this current carrying wire and the current is a constant current in this wire if I take the small element of this wire let's say uh, DLM and I see the angular position or the angular uh, position of point P from this infinitesimal small length element dl this angle is theta and the current flowing through the wire is i and this distance here is let's say small r so biosevert observed that the magnetic field created at point p to so the magnitude of that field is, is proportional to the current flowing in the wire it is proportional to the length of the wire length of the element that we have considered right now and the sign of the angular position of the point and inversely uh, proportional to the square of the distance of the point p from the let's say point o okay so if we combine all these things bp is proportional to i d l sine theta divided by r square uh, if we want to remove this uh, proportionality sign we will have a proportionality constant which is equal to mu 0 upon 4 pi i d l sine theta over r square. With this mu 0 as a constant, name is probability of free, of free space, you can say. Probability of free space. Probability of vacuum or probability of free space. The value of mu 0 is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 Tesla meter per ampere in SI units if you represent your magnetic field in Tesla. Tesla is one of the unit of the magnetic field and if you represent that uh, this is the SI unit if you represent the magnetic field in Tesla then uh, mu zero will have the uh, unit as Tesla meter per ampere. Now we on this very uh, simple observation they give a very interesting law the very powerful law by a law which tells about you the magnitude of the magnetic field created uh, at any point uh, near a current carrying wire the only condition here they have to think in our mind is that the current that is flowing through this wire is the constant one that is it does not change with time so magnetic field that we are getting at point p it is also constant in magnitude once uh, at a particular point and then VP uh, is mu 0 upon 4 pi ideal sine theta over R square. If we want to write down the same expression just that we have just wrote down, if you want to write down in the vector notation, let me number this as uh, relation 1. So by in vector notation, VP is equal to mu 0 upon 4 pi i dl cross r over r cube. 
because a cross b of n2 vector is a b sine theta n hat where n hat is perpendicular to uh, both a and b in such a fashion that if you curl our fingers uh, right hand finger from a to b then our thumb will point in the direction of n hat so that tells that the direction of b is perpendicular to both l and r the dl and r right and uh, what we have to do to find out the direction of magnetic field we have to curl our right hand fingers from dl to dr then our direction of thumb will represent the direction of magnetic field. For example, if L and R both in, are in the plane of the paper that we have just drawn, and if I curl my uh, right hand, uh, if I curl my right hand fingers from L to R, just showing me that my magnetic field uh, at point P due to this direction of the current flowing will be perpendicularly inward. So for that, we generally use the symbol. Uh, cross which shows that the magnetic field is perpendicularly inward in, in the plane of the paper okay so that is the vector form of uh, the magnetic field at point p now this by a simple law which was of very in great importance given by bio in 1820 uh, led to a very interesting application in case of uh, various physical problems like uh, if what is the suppose we want to find out what is the magnetic field due to a straight uh, wire having current i at a, any particular point p so right now do we have taken this any general wire which has the current i and we have to find out the magnetic field at any point p which is at angular position theta from a particular section of the wire and now suppose we want to find out the magnetic field due to current carrying wire, constant current carrying wire. Let's suppose this is the uh, our straight wire having the current I, constant current I, and I want to find out the magnetic field at this point P, which is at the perpendicular distance or from this wire okay and this wire is of finite length and let's say if i join the two ends of this wire a b from the point p and this, this angle is alpha and this angle is let's say this is let's say uh, theta theta so what is the magnetic field at point p not to see that we'll have to take an infinitesimally small element length element on the wire let me take here it's a dl in very small it's very very small uh, i've just shown it to be a little bigger just so that it will be visible otherwise it's extremely tiny in length and if i take the angular position of p from this uh, tiny little length of the wire from the tiny little length element of this wire and this angle uh, let me consider to be less the delta so now according to the bio severed law uh, what will be the magnetic field at point p the magnitude of the magnetic field point p will be i dl sine delta over now the, this distance let me consider as d here and the length, uh, this DL length, I have considered a, let's say small at a small L distance from this point O, which I'm considering the origin of my problem. So this will be under root R square plus L square, the square of this. Okay, times the constant mu zero over four pi. So mu zero over four pi times i d l sine delta over r square plus l square. Okay, so given quantities here are alpha, theta, and r i. There is no uh, suppose you have been not given the length of the wire. Instead, you have given this alpha and theta. These are the two 
parameter, the angle that has been given to you, uh, other than the length of the wire. In that case, we will uh, we'll like to retain this alpha, theta, and i in our final expression in R uh, rather than the L, because that's something which we have assumed that at L distance we have taken the infinitesimal small element dl okay so for that i need to find out the relation between uh, delta and uh, l so what i can do here is in this figure i can find out a relation if i look carefully this angle here is a, nothing but the y minus delta okay if i take the then y minus delta in this figure so that is going to give me that is going to give me r upon l and then pi minus delta is nothing but minus than delta is equal to r upon l and this gives me that L is actually equal to minus R cot delta. So let me number this as one. This is number two. What can I do from two? I can find out DL here by differentiating it. So minus cot delta will get differentiated minus cosec square delta D delta. All right, so from one and two uh, and three, I can write down the following. So dBP is equal to mu zero upon four pi i dl is now r cosec square delta. sin delta d delta divided by r square plus l square is now r square cot square delta so that's going to give me mu 0 upon 4 pi i by r because if i take r square common uh, in the denominator and one r will get cancelled and 1 plus cot square delta is equal to cosec square delta so I will have ultimately sine delta d delta. Now to find out the magnetic field at point P, the total magnetic field due to the entire length of the wire, finite length of the wire, I will have to integrate it with the proper limits on delta. What's the proper limits on delta? If I integrate it, sine delta d delta. What's the limits on delta here? If we look at the, our figure, delta is equal to alpha in the lower limit. And in the upper limit is equal to theta. So if I put here delta is equal to alpha to delta is equal to theta. So what I'm going to get is mu zero upon four pi i by r minus cos of delta with the angle delta equal to alpha to delta equal to theta, which gives me mu zero upon four pi i by r minus cos theta plus cos alpha. So this is the expression that we are getting for magnetic field at a point P. Okay, so that is the value of the magnetic field at point P. Now, what will be the direction of this magnetic field? I say, think the direction of magnetic field will be by the bio servert law again if i curl my finger from l to r or l to d for if for this direction of dbp if i look so that will be coming out perpendicularly inward again there is in fact another rule uh, by which you can see the direction if i put my thumb right hand thumb in the direction of the current uh, along the wire so my palm Will, will be representing the perpendicular to the palm will be representing the direction of magnetic field if i, I put my uh, thumb in the direction of the current carrying conductor current carrying wire 
then my palm uh, will be like this on the plane of the paper so this direction this is telling me the direction perpendicularly inward of the magnetic field or we can uh, see from the uh, uh, rule that I have been we are using like you can I, you can curl your fingers from L to R and your thumb will point the direction of magnetic field so that is uh, the amount of magnetic field that you get now uh, what we have to uh, be careful about here is that is most of the questions uh, they change the these angles theta and alpha rather they uh, instead of giving this theta if they give the angle as this uh, let me call this as beta angle so beta from our figure is beta is nothing but pi minus theta if you look carefully beta is here nothing but pi minus theta so if I use that in my final expression as equation number let's say I guess 4 or 3 equation number 3 so uh, from 3 if I use beta equal to pi minus theta so this is going to give me mu 0 0.4 pi i by r cos uh, alpha minus cos theta will be pi minus beta which will be 0 0.4 pi i by r cos alpha cos pi minus theta is minus cos theta which is plus cos beta so in terms of alpha and beta if these two angles are given here rather than uh, alpha and theta as we discussed in the previous case the expression will read as this so we'll have to be really careful and observe which angles have been given in our problem and uh, accordingly we have to use the form okay so now what will be the magnetic field at point p if op happens to be the perpendicular bisector of this wire so what i'm trying to say is that what will be the magnetic field there's another question that we can ask what will be the magnetic field at point p let's say if this distance is again same as r this is o and this is this time a perpendicular bisector of this y length let's say a b so op is perpendicular to perpendicular bisector of a b so what's the magnetic field at point p that's what we are asking in that case what will happen if i join my a to p and b to p so these angles that we were talking about alpha and beta they will be same because if we look these two triangles uh, o p a the triangle o p a and the triangle o p b so both if we compare both the triangle so both have common uh, op as common both have this angle 90 degree angle aop and bop and it is perpendicular bisector that is oa equal to o, ob so it means they are basically identical triangle so in that case what we can uh, conclude is that angle alpha is equal to angle beta so here alpha will be equal to beta if i use this equation 4 and put alpha equal to beta there so bp will turn out to be mu 0 upon 4 pi i by r into twice cos alpha which is equal to mu 0 upon 4 pi 2 pi r uh, rather and i cos alpha so that is the expression that we get for BP at for, for magnetic field at point P for perpendicular bisector. If instead of uh, giving this angle alpha, suppose uh, for this finite length of the wire, uh, for the finite wire, the length has been given as L. So an OA and OB becomes L by 2. So we can really convert this cos alpha. Uh, we can write down this cos alpha in terms of L and R. 
So we can further write down this expression BP is equal to mu zero upon two pi r times i, and then we had cos alpha in the numerator, which will be equal to now cos alpha will be equal to OB upon BP. So cos alpha from this figure will be OB upon BP. Okay, base upon hypotenuse. Base is L by two, and uh, this BP length is under the root L square by four plus R square. So we can really put this value here, and this will become L by two under the root L square by four plus R square. So that is uh, what's the expression for magnetic field at point P reads in case when OP has to be the perpendicular bisector of this wire and the length of the wire is given to us. So this is the final expression we get as BP. Now what will be the direction of this magnetic field? The direction of magnetic field will be certainly perpendicularly inward. Okay, so this finishes the uh, first application of the uh, Bio-Server law because with the help of this law we could find out the magnetic field at a point P near a state uh, current carrying wire uh, in the case when it is perpendicular uh, distance R and when they, uh, we have the finite length of the wire. Next question could be asked that what is the magnetic field at point P if the length of the wire happens to be infinite if you have really very long wire infinitely long wire and it's no more a finite wire then what is the magnetic field at point P so I will redraw my diagram a little bit so we have this infinite wire now and uh, this was my point P here and for this perpendicular distance r, this was my O, and this was in the beginning was alpha, and this was beginning in the beta. Uh, this was beta. So now what will happen uh, when the wire, this AB length, is of really infinite in length? So what will happen to the angle alpha and beta? In in the case when AB is infinite. We, we, we are going to have alpha because when AB is infinitely long and we match the try to match P with the upper end, P, uh, in fact, it's infinite, there's no such upper end and lower end. So this alpha and beta will go to zero. It will become parallel. Uh, this joining lines uh, from A to P and B to B will become sort of parallel to the infinite length AB itself. So alpha beta will be equal to zero. And from equation, uh, Four, we can read that from equation four, we can read that BP is turns out to be mu naught upon four pi i by r. So equation four was this. So we put alpha and beta both uh, zero here. So we are going to get one plus one, and that is going to give me mu zero upon two pi r times i. So that is the expression for the magnetic field at point P from infinitely long wire having the constant current i and the point p is at the perpendicular distance r from the wire now what will be the direction of this this direction is same perpendicular inward that have been we have been discussing so that's the direction and the magnitude of the magnetic field at p due to the infinite uh, length of wire next we are going to consider is what is the magnetic field at the center of a current carrying coil circular coil so if you have a circular coil let's say like this and uh, it is having a current i now it may have current i in the clockwise direction and the anti-clockwise direction suppose i take direction and if this current i is constant we are considering the case when i is constant with time okay then what is the magnetic field uh, created at the center o of this uh, circular coil 
for, for that we can again use the bias avert law it's such an interesting and powerful law you see suppose i take the very small length segment on the circumference of this coil as dl if i match with the o if the radius of this circular coil is let's say r so magnetic uh, field at point o due to this dl length of the uh, dl length which will be dbo is equal to mu zero upon four pi i dl sine 90 degree because this length element is so tiny that it is almost straight because it's very tiny and if i match it with the origin this angle between r and dl is 90 degree right so uh, that upon r square so that will give me mu zero upon four pi i dl over r square now if i calculate b o f i have to integrate for that and i'm going to get mu zero upon four pi i upon r square and i integrate dl i'm going to get two pi r the circumference of this coil so which is nothing but mu zero upon four pi i by r square into two pi r so final expression at uh, O magnetic field read, read as mu zero upon four pi i by r square times two pi r, which gives me mu zero upon two i by r. Okay, so that is the amount of the magnetic field at the center of the circular coil. A couple of uh, quick observations that we see. First of all, uh, we have taken the current I to be constant and this magnetic field at the center. What is the direction of the magnetic field? If we apply the bias avert law here and if I put, uh, if I let's say curl my finger from L to R, I curl my finger from DL to R, again it is showing that the direction of B is perpendicularly inward or you can use the uh, right hand uh, palm rule that I've put my uh, thumb in the direction or right and thumb in the direction of the flowing current I and uh, if I when I do so uh, my palm rests on the plane of the paper which shows that the uh, B is perpendicular to the palm inward right so that means uh, B is again here perpendicularly inward so this is again perpendicularly inward. So that's the uh, direction and the magnitude of the magnetic field at the center of a current carrying loop. So here we have considered the single uh, current carrying loop. If this loop has n number of turns, if loop is having n number of turns, then B V zero will be mu zero and I by two R. So that's it for now. In the next video, I will discuss more application of bias law.